Hello, I am Trey Ratcliffe. Welcome to my studio here in New Zealand. I've been out taking a lot of photos of all the beautiful trees and ponds and all kinds of stuff. And I wanted to come to you with a quick tip for Aurora HDR about how to make super reflective water, okay? Whenever you have a good reflection, I think that gives you a lot of artistic license uh, to really amp it up and make it more beautiful. To me, whenever you have a reflection, it really just adds so much to the photo. You know, I think it just feels much more like a, a beautiful landscape. And especially if you get like a smooth, windless day with no waves, you can just make the reflections quite glorious, okay? So this is a, a you know, beautiful willow tree by a pond, obviously. And we're gonna make the water uh, like extra dreamy, extra reflective, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer here. I hit plus, add a new adjustment layer. And of course, this is a great advantage of uh, Aurora HDR over Lightroom is you can do layers, you can do different things in different parts of the photo. All right. And these tools that I'm showing you are just not available in Lightroom at all. Okay. It's really kind of like a very strong Orton effect, if you've heard of that. Okay. So I'm going to go down here to Image Radiance, um, slide this up quite a bit. Okay. And you can see now it's changing the whole image. Okay. But don't let that worry. We're only going to be doing it to the pond. But as I make the adjustments, you're gonna see it happen to the whole image. But just try to pay attention to, to the pond. Okay, so I'm gonna amp this up, uh, pull up the shadows a little bit, because I think a lot of times in a reflection, there should be almost no shadows, because what the reflective surface is doing is gathering more light and shooting it back up into the shadows. Uh, increase the vividness a little bit. Now you can see it starts to get a little over the top, okay? And the brightness is probably the most important, okay? Because it's okay to have a reflection sometimes even be brighter than the uh, than what's above it. Okay, again, because it's collecting a lot of light and it's kind of shooting it up into your lens. Um, and obviously, when you're on these locations, uh, think about your experience in real life. Okay, that's what I try to recapture with the photos. Is I try to what is that experience in real life? And when you're really there, you're really looking a lot at the pond because you you don't see a good reflective pond that often, so you're quite mesmerized with it. And a lot of times people's, you know, if you do a pie slice of how much time you look at different things and this probably most of the time is spent looking at the beautiful reflection. Okay. So that's going to be the emphasis of the photo. So now that I'm over here, okay, I'm going to click the brush. See this one, brush, I'll click the brush. And then I'm going to start brushing in down here. Okay. Now you see all the other stuff disappear. Now I'm just brushing in down here. All right. Brush, brush, brush. Now by default, you can look up here, the opacity, oh, it's usually 100%, sorry, so let me put that up to 100%. I get this red tree, make it nice and nice and high like that. Um, now, if I do over here, okay, I feel like that's a little too blue, okay? So I'm gonna undo that with Command Z, and I'm gonna drop down my opacity just a bit, maybe to 50%, and just do it over here, okay? Okay, looks good, but I might increase the brightness even more. Notice now that as I move this around, you can see that it's only adjusting the pond. Okay, see that? Only so make it even a little bit brighter, uh, smoother. Uh, this is also very important with the uh, reflections because, you know, I guess there's two schools of thought. You can have the reflection be exactly 100% of what's above it. Okay, sometimes I don't like that because it can look too photoshopped or too perfect. Uh, sometimes a counterintuitive truth to photos is to have small, like engineered mistakes or inconsistencies in there. All right, uh, just to make people like wonder a little bit. All right. Um, so as you can see here, we've got a nice little reflection. I might even warm it up a little bit more. Let's see if it looks good cooler or warmer. Cooler or warmer. I like it warmer. I like that nice warm feel to it. There we go. So um, I can turn this little eyeball off and on. So this is before I had a super reflective lake. It's like plain reflective lake. And then after. Okay. And let's look at the overall before and after this photo. By the way, this is taken from three different photos, dark, medium, and light. Although I could have just done it with a single raw photo. Okay. So if I click this, I can slide this over and look at the before and after. Okay. See before is a little bit boring. The sky's a little blown out and the reflection's a little dark, uh, but now it's like a completely different photo, okay? And you may not want to take it at the same extreme that I did. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to move the sliders quite as far if you like something more subtle. Uh, but I like a nice, bold landscape statement with bright colors. I love 
colors. What can I say? I love them unapologetically. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little tip, that little trick. We have a lot more over on my YouTube channel, a lot of stuff over on my Facebook. So feel free to join me um, over there. And also sometime, why not come out to New Zealand? Uh, come to one of our New Zealand uh, autumn workshops. We put on maybe one here per year and maybe one somewhere else around the world. So you can always check out our workshop pages because we go out, have a great time, we take photos, uh, and then we all go back to a dark room, very nerdy, and we start editing photos. And of course, I'm using Aurora HDR, all right? All right, hope you guys like that. I uh, love you, take care, uh, go out there and get creative.